very um, unusual opera, very interesting, even within the context of the subsequent centuries, because it's very hard to know who the hero is. Ostensibly, immorality wins. Sexual love and murder seem to have the best music and seem to, to end up, end up um, winning. There's another way of reading it, which is, uh, which is a way that I like to read it, which is that yes, the, the Nero and Popea, um, although, although Nero is already married and Popea is a prostitute, um, their marriage at the end uh, is very short-lived. And if you know that it's very short-lived, then you realize that um, she's, go there, she's going to be dead very soon after the curtain comes down and he's going to be killed soon thereafter as well. So you can think of that as being the real ending. There are two couples, as in most 17th century Venetian operas, there are two couples. In this sense, it's conventional. Uh, the couples are Nero and Ottavia. They're, they're married. They're the empress and emperor of Rome. And the other couple is Ottone and Popea. He's a Roman consul, and she is a tart. Ottone is sent away. Um, because Nero has designs on Popea. Then he gets together with Popea, and his lieutenant comes home and finds them together. And that starts the whole thing rolling. And Popea, um, she wants Nero, and Nero wants her, but Nero is married to Ottavia. So the first thing he has to do is get rid of Ottavia. And the second thing he has to do is convince his tutor, Seneca, uh, to condone the, the uh, divorce. And Seneca is close to Ottavia, and he believes in marital love and the, the good of the state. Uh, but Nero doesn't really care about the good of the state. And they have a tremendous confrontation, he and, and Seneca, about the good of the state. And ba basically, Nero, is, Nero wins the, the argument. It's, a, it's one of the great scenes in the opera, uh, right at the middle of the opera. Um, in fact, um, I, I've always thought of this opera as being in two big parts, although it's in three acts, and it's bisected by the death of Seneca. If you happen to think he's the hero, which is one way of interpreting the opera, it's very rare for a hero to die in the middle of the opera. Like the first half is everyone's fighting against uh, their, their lower uh, instincts, but in the second half, when Seneca's no longer there to support them, they all go over the deep end and become corrupt Romans. At the end, what you see is uh, the triumph of sexual love and, um, and murder, and um, you know there are a lot of dead bodies. In showing the uh, depravity of the Romans, it, it, there's an Im implicit uh, statement about Venice that Venice would not, would never behave that way. That Venice is so far superior to Rome, that that now that it's the new Rome, and that it, it you could never get away with this in Venice.